The federal government has shifted the reopening of some airports by two weeks, and following that decision, experts have warned that the once vibrant sector may further plunge into a deep crisis soon. The sector, according to some local airline workers and stakeholders, is currently grappling with several problems ranging from coronavirus pandemic, depleted funds due to the international lockdown, and looming job loss, among others. The staff of most of the local airlines in Nigeria have been told not to expect salaries at the end of the month and others could lose their jobs. To further make sense of this, we have aviation expert Isaac Balami joining us via phone. Good afternoon to you, Isaac, and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you very much for having me. What is our aviation industry looking like now in the face of COVID-19 crisis? Ah, shut down. Total shut down. Now, what, what does this extension of, of the lockdown pretend for the industry? The extension, you see, normally, the aviation industry is very, very fragile. And um, this lockdown has caused a lot of troubles for our industry. You know very, very well that normally the profit margin is not very, very high. And um, any small shaking in the aviation industry leads to a serious uh, downturn for us. So we are hoping that this lockdown is lifted as soon as possible. But even with that, we are still going to have challenge because an aircraft shift is just like, I would say, a perishable item. Once the aircraft door is locked, then you've lost revenue. If this is an even, even Even before the shutdown, we had no traffic flow. And now things are even worse. Whether an aircraft flies or not, there are fixed costs in the aviation industry. And those fixed costs are actually not easy for us to keep up with when there is no inflow of revenue. For example, for an average Boeing 727 aircraft, even if you don't fly it, what you're losing per day is about a hundred thousand US dollars. So who is for those costs? We still have salaries to pay. You know, we have so many bills on our head. We have insurance running. We have the spare parts. Some of those aircraft spare parts are being powered by the hour. And we are losing money today. So we are believing that the government will come to the rescue of the aviation industry. Interesting, Isaac. You did make mention of salaries. Now, some domestic airline operators have said they might not be able to pay their staff salary. It's April. What's your contemplation on this? Well, I have spoken to some airline owners even today. I would say most of them were able to pay last month's salary. And then they are making efforts, even though there is no any revenue, to see how they can pay. Even if it's not 100% salary this month. But after this month, I am afraid for the future of the industry. Because where is the money? Before now, the airlines are struggling. The cost of aviation fuel, which is known as Jet A1. The cost of salaries is also high here in Nigeria. Uh, the, the, the cost of maintenance, we just have few hangars like my MRO, that's that global hangar, and few around that are just coming up. But up till now, about 80% of maintenance are done overseas. A lot of airlines now, they have their aircraft in a hangar. They are expected to pay millions of dollars, and now they are not even operating. So what do we do? As an aviation I know expert, that uh, it's going to be tough. As an aviation expert, Isaac, what, what are your recommendations moving forward? My recommendation is the government has to be very, very proactive. They need to sit down with the airline operators. They need to also sit down 
with the service providers because it's not just the airlines that make the aviation industry to work. We have the ground handlers, including ourselves, we do aircraft maintenance. And then you, know, you also have the aviation catering service. All those people are grounded. And if they don't get a bailout, there's going to be a serious mess as soon as the country opens up. Isaac Balami, aviation expert, it's been a pleasure having you join us on News on the Hour.